welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be my monthly installment of Shop My Stash. So that is a series I do here on my channel where I pick some products to just focus in on, see if I still love them, see if I want to keep them in my collection, if they still bring me joy. I come back, talk to you about all my findings for the last month, and then we pick out new products together. So if that sounds good to you, if you like Shop My Stash videos, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love it if you stuck around, but with all that, let's just talk about the products I've been using for the last month. All right, I swear I am not going to continue to talk about the background. However, I do just have to say, because my last video, my Will I Buy It on Sunday, which I'll link up above, the lighting was just so, so bad. And we're just back to what I had originally before I left here. I have just been traveling a lot since July. It's exhausting. I am not someone who loves to travel. I honestly like having my own little place, my roots. I am an earth sign through and through, but for now we're just, we're rolling with the punches. So the lighting's back. Hopefully it's okay. And I mean, it is what it is. I did at least just want to address it because the last video was like bad, bad on the lighting. Anyways, we're going to go over all of my products that I've been using for the last month. Um, I wish I had had a little bit more time with some of these only because I did bring them when I was on my, my trip to Spain. I was volunteering at a dog rescue for six weeks and I wasn't wearing a lot of makeup is really what it came down to. In the beginning, I really tried to be good, stick with it. And then like two weeks left, I still, um, is when I swapped like rotations. I filmed my last shot, my stash at the center. So I brought these there, but by that time I was kind of just like tired of putting makeup on every day when I was outside for 12, 13, 14 plus hours. Um, I just kind of got sick of it and kind of didn't wear it as much as I wanted to, but I'm still going to talk about my findings. I've been trying, you know, this past week that I've been here to really hone in on some of these and just get my thoughts. So I at least had something to come back and report. So let's just go in order of application, starting with primer. I pulled the Cover FX Blurring Primer, and this is really, this is really nice. I have nothing bad to say about this. The thing with this primer that I've really rediscovered is that this is like not a really heavy duty blurring primer. This is good if you want something that's gonna give you a little bit of blur, a little bit of pore filling. You can put it all over your face. It's not something like the Tarte smoothing primer where you really just want to like target in on those enlarged pores. This is good enough where you can kind of just put it all over your face. It's not super silicone-y. So I would recommend it for someone, you know, who doesn't have too many issues, maybe just wants like a little bit of blur, or this is even really nice to wear without foundation and just give you like a little bit of security if you want. So I actually quite enjoyed it different, you know, purpose than maybe what I was thinking, but nonetheless, still really great. And then for foundation, I pulled two, uh, both similar, both different. So I pulled the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream. I have the original and then I have the Nude Glow, both in the shade Light. So I am wearing the Nude Glow today. Everything that I'm wearing is listed down in the description box below. This was one that I pulled... Well, I pulled both of these because I love the original It Cosmetics. It's one of my holy grails. This is my second bottle of this. And I don't say that lightly because I have way too many foundations. So for me to like finish a foundation really says something. Um, and then I bought this one. And if memory serves, I didn't love this. I did not give this a great first impression. I did a dedicated video on it, which will be linked above. But... It just was like a little bit too glowy for me and I wanted to get my thoughts again, see if this was worth keeping and I decided I'm going to keep it. I actually do like it. I don't recommend this for people with oily skin. Obviously, I don't think anyone with oily skin would gravitate towards this, but for a sheerer, just a smidge sheerer coverage than the original, this is really nice. And it's not even that it's more sheer, it's that the 
consistency is a little bit lighter than the original. This is really like a medium coverage, a typical, I'm not going to say matte because they have a matte finish in the It Cosmetics, but like it leans definitely a little bit matte and this is kind of bridging the gap for that. Um, I do like both. This is still my favorite. This I have to set with powder. So if I used like the blurring primer with this, with a powder that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, I really like it, but by itself, I don't. I just get too oily in my T-zone. It looks too glowy for me, but I can still make this work with minimal effort. This is just holy grail status because I can throw it on don't need to set it. I can put powder products on top. It doesn't skip or grab those products. It works with everything. So this is just a better overall foundation, in my opinion, for people who don't want to like fuss with too many steps. Then for concealer, I pulled in my Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer. I have the shade for Fair. Really nice concealer. I remember I really, really liked this when it came out. I gave it a pretty decent review. I have a dedicated video on this as well. It's a nice, solid, medium coverage concealer. The thing is, like now that it's not new and shiny in my collection, it doesn't stand out. It wouldn't be, you know, if I had a very small collection, like this would not be in the top five concealers I would keep or want to have in my rotation. There's just nothing that stands out. There's nothing that's special about it. It's just really like your run of the mill. And for luxury, for something a little bit more expensive, I want it to be, I want it to stand out from drugstore. I want it to stand out from less expensive products and it doesn't. So this is not something I like recommend. It's okay if you love Charlotte Tilbury, like great, but not something like I would rush out to buy. Then for powder, this is what I've been setting the It Cosmetics Nude Glow with. This is the Nikita Joy Cosmetics. This is, what is this? The Velvet Finishing Powder. A ton of people like swear by this powder. And this was something that was unopened in my collection. I wanted to finally give it a try. Love this powder. I can see why everyone talks about it. It's not for every foundation for me because I'm normal leaning dry. Um, I can get, like I said, oily, pretty shiny in my T-zone, but I don't have oily skin. I'm not trying to like combat oils as much. So this for me really is best for foundations that I find to be just a little bit too glowy. It will kind of tone it down while letting my skin look natural, not overly matte. That's what I was afraid of. I think with this powder and why it took me so long to actually try it after I got it is that I thought my skin was just going to look really dry. That's not the case. Like it does give a really nice velvet finish. <laughs> That's why it's called the velvet powder to your makeup without looking cakey or heavy. Um, it's not translucent. So that was like another thing. I, I didn't take the sifter all the way off because I didn't want powder everywhere, but it has like, you know, some some color to it. It's not completely just translucent. It adds a tiny bit of coverage, but just not too much. It's a really nice in-between of being like a really heavy duty baking powder. For example, like the Huda Beauty powder comes to mind versus like a translucent powder like the Hourglass Veil powder. This is kind of like sitting in between and I like it a lot. I'm glad that I finally pulled it out and tried it. Now let's talk about my cheek products, bronzer, blush, and highlight. I usually pull in one cream, one powder. So for bronzer, these were my picks. This was my cream, the Phytosurgeons Cream Bronzer in shade two, Rosy Daybreak. I really, really enjoy this bronzer. I Phytosurgeons has like a very different formula and texture to all their products. You really need to do a deep dive on their website to like understand how best to use their products. So I do recommend them, but just know like with the caveat, if you're a little bit lazy and don't wanna do that, don't pick up these products or you'll just be disappointed. But this cream bronzer is spectacular. I used it a lot more for underpainting just so I could utilize both the powder and the cream, but it is that perfect just neutral bronzer I, I say neutral, but it, like it has a little bit of coolness. So it kind of really just worked really well for underpainting because it kind of gave me like that chiseled contour without being like, oh my gosh, she's like really contouring her face, you know? So I very much enjoy this. You need to use a brush, not your fingers. Like I said, it just feels, 
What's different about it is it just feels like you're picking up no product when you run your finger over it. It's not great for swatches, but it picks up on a brush and it lays down beautifully. It's very hard to over apply this. I very much like it. I want to prioritize using this because I don't want it to go bad in my collection. So very happy with this. Again, I did a whole video trying like all the Phytosurgeons products I picked up, I think last year around Black Friday time. And it took me a while to finally do that video, but I liked most of the products. The cream bronzer was one of my top favorites. And then for powder, I picked the Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess. This is in the shade 01 Light. They do kind of like a bronze goddess collection every summer that's limited edition. This is a couple years old by now, and I wanted to give it some love. It's a really nice, I got the shade 01 Light, so it is too light for me in the summer when maybe I should be using it the most but in the winter it's really nice it gives just like this beautiful summer glow I mean it is a bronze goddess kind of bronzer it is too light for me in the, in the summer but that's okay it kind of it gives me that hope for for summer looking forward to summer in the winter time which now it's like getting really cold out I'm not happy about it. Back in Spain, when I was there, it was just so hot all the time. I came back to France, which is where I live primarily most of the time, in between traveling, and immediately froze. <laughs> it was raining, it was windy, like I'm just not happy with the lack of sun now. So this gives me a little a little glimpse back into summer, back into the nice days when it was nice to just sit outside. Very much like this. Would I pick up other Estee Lauder bronzers from their like summer collection? No, I'm happy with that one. I'd recommend picking it up if you think that it's pretty, but it's going to take me a long time to get through that bronzer. And then for blush, cream and powder, the cream is we're stretching the term for cream. This is kind of like a cream to powder. It's the Apu Juicy Pang Jelly Blusher. Very reminiscent of the MAC Glow Play blushes. It has just like that cream to powder. It, it's like a Glow Play blush. I don't know how best to describe it. Here's what it looks like. Again, I use this for underpainting just so I could utilize both in this at the same time. It's a very pretty color. This is the shade let's see be02 it'll be linked but it looks like this very soft very natural gives just kind of this watercolor effect like just a soft flush of color don't get this if you're super into blush for sure but if you're looking for a dupe for the matte glow play then check this out i i want to say it's probably less expensive than the mac but i can't verify that for sure until i link it i'm pretty pretty sure that it's probably less expensive though so this is really pretty happy to have this i also like my glow play blushes so i'm not going to get rid of them but this is a great dupe a great alternative and i'm glad that i finally got some use out of that and then for my powder blush this is the color pop powder blush in flirt alert I had this unopened in my collection as well. Sometimes I'll pull in unopened things just because I do need to also prioritize trying those. And I really wanted to give this one a shot. I didn't expect it to blow my mind. I really bought it for the packaging. This is just the most neutral blush they had in this packaging. So, you know, it's fine. It's nice. Could I live without this? Absolutely. It's not going to it's not going to change your life, so to say, but for an affordable blush and cute packaging, I'm happy to have it, and at least I gave it some love. Then lastly, for highlight, I only have a powder because I'm not really into creams. Luckily, I don't have too much of an out-of-control category in cream highlights. I mean, it's still more than I could probably use in my lifetime, but I don't have nearly as many as cream bronzers, cream blushes. Maybe this round will pick a cream highlight just to switch it up. But this is the, the powder highlight that I chose, and this is the Pat McGrath highlight in Venetian Nude. This came out in their Valentine's collection one year, limited edition, of course, so you can't pick this up anymore, but it was very pretty, very blinding, and it's nice. I like it. I'm glad that I have it, actually. This is a very heavy swatch, so take that into account, but I am wearing it today. I don't think it's this blinding if you kind of do it very sheer, like a lighter layer. It does, however, have like little 
glitter, little glitter specks to it. I noticed that it wasn't as much of a sheen. There's definitely like some, some glitter particles in there. So if you don't like glitter, you wouldn't like this highlight. Happy to get some love out of it. I'm happy that like the center you can kind of see is starting to wear away. That's what I want to see in my products now. I don't want to see pristine products. I want to see them used and loved. And that's the point of this project. So I'm happy to start to see like the logo wearing away. This is a large highlight. This has, I looked the other day, 8.5 grams. So it looks small, but it has a lot of product, a lot of product. And then that leaves us with eyes and lips. So we'll go over eyes first. Let's, let's do the one that I'm wearing on my eyes today. This is the Muse palette. This is primarily the one that I kind of wish I had more time to play with because I didn't use this as much as I wanted this last month, but I still did use it. I'm wearing it today. I really, I really love my eye look, how it came out today. It was something kind of like out of the box for me. I normally wouldn't wear this like or yellow kind of shade, this kind of like mac and cheese shade, but I knew I wanted to wear this sweater and it went well with it. So I'm wearing Admire here. I'm wearing Willow in the outer corner. Um, I put a bit of petal kind of like to blend out this shade right above it to just bring like some pink into it. And then for my shimmers, I used Inspire and topped it with antique to kind of just tone down the green a little bit. This, this eye look is making me want the new Cosmic Beauty Undergrowth palette, I think it's called. And I'm kind of like being convinced to pick that one up. That and the neutrals are kind of on my list. But I think I'm going to wait till Black Friday for like a sale, hopefully. Neutrals is out of stock anyways. Back to this palette though. Right now, this is my favorite Cosmic Beauty palette. I have quite a few from them, but this is the one I go back to. This is the one that I love. Very happy with it. Love that you can kind of get cool tones, warm tones, just a mix of everything and just the saturation, the mutiness of this palette is everything that I love in these colors. So nothing bad to say other than I just wish I had used it more this past month. The two that I used the most were these two little ones because they were super simple, super easy. So this is the Natasha Denona My Mini Dream Palette. I do not have the midi size My Dream. That one didn't really speak to me when I first saw it. But again, like this is kind of making me want that palette. I don't know. I'm like going in this. I used to, I was really good at stepping outside of outside of myself and looking at Natasha Denona palettes and being like, okay, I don't need that one. I do need this one. But for some reason, as of recent, like I really just like, am getting back to this. Oh, I want all of them. I want to pick up all the ones I never picked up. So the Yucca, the My Dream, the Retro Glam, I don't have. Like I even last night actually went on the Natasha Denona website and add them, added them all to cart. And then I was like, no, like you didn't buy those for a reason. So maybe I'll pick up the My Dream palette, but the Yucca and the Retro Glam I need to stay strong on. But this palette's just perfect. It has everything for a daytime look if you just want the shimmer or a more glam nighttime smoky look if you want to use this shimmer. Like you can either use this dark shade or you don't have to. I just think this is a really nice travel palette. Really like it. I love these kinds of tones, like these cool tone browns are what I want in a cool tone, not different shades of gray, but colors like these. This is what I want cool tone to be. And I very much enjoy this palette. The other one I grabbed was my Dior Quint in Soft Cashmere. This was also something that was unopened. My only, I think, Dior palette that was unopened that I had. And this is in the older formula. I picked this up when I heard that Dior was reformulating their quints because they've done that like five times. How many times has Dior reformulated? I can't even keep track anymore. But this, this quint is perfect. I love this. It's everything that I love. I was a little nervous that this shade and this shade were gonna be too similar to each other. They look quite different on camera, but in person they look a lot more similar. This is just more of a matte and this is a little bit more of a satin, but again, like just easy looks. Don't have to think about it. This shade here is spectacular. It is the prettiest, just very light iridescent purple topper 
love it for a luxury brand this shade really just has like this wet effect to it really surprised me for a luxury brand on just how pretty this shade in particular was so I think this might be my favorite Dior Quint if I'm being honest kind of monotone kind of like you know one look maybe two but I think it's my favorite one and then that brings us to lips and we're done. We can go pull out more products, but I usually pull four and some got more use than others. The one that I'm wearing today is the ColourPop Just a Tint in Shaka. I really love this. I think I'm gonna pull it into a project pan because it's just so easy. It smells so good. It was just no hassle to reach for this, this lip product. I don't love a lot of ColourPop lip products. I like this and I like the blotting lip and that's about it. The other ones I just don't reach for. I did top that just a tint with this one. This is the Odin's Eye lipstick in brown rose. Don't love this. Don't hate it. Like I got this in a mystery box. Here's what it looks like. I just kind of wanted to deepen up the shade a little bit. I thought it was looking a little bit too light. Um, it's fine. I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't recommend it. Like I want to just try and get my money's worth out of it at this point. It's not a bad formula. Like it doesn't make my lips look older than they are, but it definitely like just doesn't do anything special. And then I pulled in a Lisa Eldridge lipstick. This is Velvet Muse. Just when they're darker like this, I'm not going to get give them the love that they deserve. This is more of like a cool tone. Like you can see the Odin's eyes more warm. This is more cool. One of my favorite shades of the Lisa Eldridge, but just being that I didn't wear a lot of makeup, I didn't wear this as much, maybe once or twice, if I'm just being like really honest. So kind of a sad month for the lipstick, but that's okay. You win some, you lose some. I'll rotate it out. And then hopefully next time I bring it in, it'll get more love. The one that got the most love was this Tower 28. This is in the shade Coconut and it's just, I don't know, lip gloss. It's whatever it is. It feels like a lip oil. Shine on lip jelly. I wore this all the time, all the time. In fact, I'm sure like there's some windowing in here. It's just, it's just easy. No fuss, no hassle. I wore it more than even the ColourPop just because it gave nice shine. Like it, when my lips felt dry, I try to reach for this instead of reaching for my normal just chapstick. There is some windowing if you can see. So like I can really swirl it around. I think it's like about to here when I actually twist it down, like I think it's about to here. So I got some, some good use on it. I'm pretty proud of my usage because I do not finish lip products that often. So I might just continue working on this on the side. We'll see and see if I can like finish it. I would love to just really pare down my lipstick collection. So happy with this. Would I repurchase it? I would not. I don't love it enough to repurchase it, but for now, again, like maybe I can get my money's worth out of it, finish it, roll it out. But those are all the products that I tried and used for the last month. I'm not decluttering anything, so that's really nice because sometimes I do. Um, but now I'm going to turn you around and we're going to pick out new products for the next month together. Starting off with primer, just like we did when I spoke about it. I really like my goal for this drawer is to just get it to one level, not so kind of piled up. I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm actually proud of the direction this drawer is headed, but we still have some work to do. I normally pull in a pore smoothing primer just because I am working on more of like a hydrating primer in my project pan. So I think this time I'm going to pull this in. As you can see, I've never opened it. This is the L'Oreal Magic Perfecting Base. I believe this is supposed to be a dupe for the Tarte. So I'm gonna give this one a shot, actually see, because I do also have the Tarte here. So get it out of this box, make it a little less bulky and see what I think about this. Now, when it comes to concealer, I, have a lot of concealers. I'm trying to remember like which one I pulled in last. 
and see which one like maybe needs some attention. I'm kind of thinking this Guerlain Terracotta Concealer. I have the shade 2N, I think, something like that. Can't see the labels too small, but I haven't pulled this out in like a long, long time. So I think it's time I give this one some love. Hopefully it's not too dark for me in the winter time, but we'll see. We'll find out. If not, I can always pull in another one. Foundations also one that I've been giving a lot of thought. I was thinking of pulling in the Shiseido. But now I'm seeing that the girl on's in here and I'm wondering if I should pull that in. But I think I'm going to stick with my gut and go with the Shiseido Revitalescent Skin Glow. This is my drawer, by the way, of ones that I haven't tried this year. I have a second drawer where I've rotated through them all. So I'm trying to get through all these and then we'll start over, get my thoughts on them. I did a video comparing this to the kind of original Synchro Skin, and I actually liked both of them. I want to get some use out of them. I have the shades 240 Quartz in both of them, so I think I'm going to pull these two in. I think that will be a good option. I'll have more of a matte and more of a glow. For powder is where it starts to get tricky because I really don't know what powder I want to pull in. I have not gone that far into thinking what I want to pull. I don't want anything too heavy because of the Shiseido's already like a medium to full coverage. I don't want it to be something I haven't opened only because I've pulled quite a few already. I pulled a primer that is unopened and I already pulled my eyeshadow palettes and those are also going to be unopened. So maybe this Giorgio Armani, this is discontinued, but I love it. It's the Luminous Silk Powder in the shade two. It is just so beautiful. I wore away the embossing already, but it's so lightweight. It's barely detectable and it's really great to set under the eyes, all over the face, whatever you want. So I love this. I actually bought a backup of this when I found out it was discontinued on Macari. So I'm going to pull this one in and give this one some love. Now face palettes, I don't always pull one every round, but I'm actually making really good progress on pulling unopened face palettes. So at least like everything in here has been tried. One of the only ones that I have left is this Jouer. This is the Be A Legend Champagne and Macaron palette. So it has, let's see, it has a highlight, two blushes, and a bronzer. So I'm thinking that I'll use this as my powder products and then we'll just pull cream for the rest for bronzer, blush, and highlight. So this will serve as my all-in-one bronzer, blush, and highlight for powder. All right, so I need only a cream from this drawer. And one that I haven't used in a while. It's hard to remember, I actually don't have that many creams. This drawer is so full, I really need to expand this to the second drawer. Um, this is like almost done, but I feel like I just pulled this in not that long ago. Maybe the Victoria Beckham little contour stick. This could be nice. Yeah, I'll pull this in. This is really cute. It's really nice. My only gripe with it is that it's super thin, which is nice as like a nose contour, but considering how expensive this product was. If you're actually using it every day, I can't see it lasting you very long. I would just kind of honestly like to get it out of my collection, but use it so I got my money's worth. I would not repurchase this based on just like how little product you get. So let's see if I can use this a little bit. Cream blush. I don't know what I want to do. I really like this Danessa Myricks. I really like this Winky Lux. I like all of these. I mean, to be honest, I was kind of thinking this Milani. 
but part of me wants to pull in these Phytosurgeons blushes since I just did the Phytosurgeons bronzer. I have the shades Evaporate and Condensate, and these, I remember when I did my video, are definitely more wintry, fall-esque blushes. So maybe this is just the right time for me to pull them in. Here's Evaporate. That other one was Condensate. They're actually very similar. This is just a little bit more warm tone. The other one's much more cooler. So I think, yeah, I think this is like a good time. I don't normally pull two, but I might as well just pull both of these, right? Like I said, I don't have too many cream highlights. At least I know myself in some way that I don't enjoy a cream highlight. Still have a lot of freaking highlight, but not too many creams. So I have the Charlotte Tilbury, which I pulled not too long ago. The ColourPop, which has a pan. And then I have two Westman Ateliers and the Stila. I think I'm gonna pull the Stila. The Stila is in Kitten. I remember this packaging is kind of wonky. Like it's just really irritating. Yeah, so let's see how much damage I can get on this Stila highlight. It's a nice highlight. I love the kitten color. I even have like the little putty ones back here, but I just, I don't like a cream highlight. So let's see what kind of usage I can get on this. Then that leaves us with lips. I'm gonna show you the eyeshadow palettes I pulled when I go over all of the, the products again. Definitely wanna pull in more like just cooler weather type lips. And I try to at least switch up the formulas a little bit. I'm gonna pull in this Viseart, whatever this is, kind of like oily gloss in the shade Fleur. So that'll kind of be a gloss then maybe I'll really push myself and pull in one of these NARS. These are the Velvet Lip Bounds and they're very dark. Maybe, like I have three of these. Maybe this color in, this is in 675. I have no idea the name of this, but that'll be kind of like a liquid lipstick. And then, what is this? Let's see. It's kind of like a nice nude. I don't know if I've pulled this in before. This is in the shade 1995. That gives me kind of like a nude to work with. And then I definitely just need like something every day. Maybe this Sephora. This is a plumping gloss, but It'll kind of help me just like mix and match with everything, I think. I think this is like a good combo. These kind of really step out. This is actually not as dark as it looks. This will get me to like kind of push myself. I have like a good nude and then I have a gloss to go with it. So these are all my products. Let me kind of show you a recap of everything that I have as well as the eyeshadow palettes that I'm going to pull. So here's everything that I've pulled. I'm really happy with this selection. I think it gives me good variety. Now, usually when I do eyeshadow palettes, I tend to try to really maximize at three, but I have one, two, three, four, five. I pulled all my Vizzy Art palettes. Um, all of these are untried. Actually, I have another Viseart palette, but that one is quite old in my collection. I think it's the Petite Volume 2. I don't need to like refresh myself with that one, and five's already a smidge overwhelming. I just know I'm not going to try these unless it's in a shop my stash. I'm not going to do a dedicated video on them, so it's time that I actually see what I think. I'm going to throw away this packaging. So I have the Petite for Lila and it looks like this so i have some cool tone options then i have the petite four framboise which looks like this i have a warm tone option i have the petite pro midsummer which this like this is coming apart which was like a big deciding factor because i keep it in the box until i use it 
And this looks like this. And then I bought these right when they launched and then I never used them. So the Violette Vespertine Untundu. So I definitely have some variety, very purpley, very mauve exactly what I love. And the Cashmere Charmeuse Untundu looks like this. So yes, I'm kind of like breaking my rules of having more than three palettes, but that's okay. I think it's time for me to like get my thoughts on these and if I need them um, in my collection or not, because they've just been sitting, not being used. I was a little bit hesitant only because there's not really like some indie shimmers. Like, do I pull some indie shimmers in to use with these? But I wanna just give them a chance on their own and see what I think. It's not like I can't, come upstairs and pull an indie shadow if I want with these like when I'm actually using them in the moment. So I'm not actually going to pull into a shot my stash. I'm just going to see how they go. If I need to pull a more intense shimmer, I can. If not, this is everything that I'm working with. So let's see what I think of these products. I don't know if there's going to be anything that I declutter quite honestly, unless I just decide I don't need it other than maybe like this lipstick. I could see being on the chopping block. I know I like this. Um, maybe this if like it just doesn't really work for me. I don't know. Kind of depends on my mood. I'm Sometimes I feel more like in a decluttering mood than others. But this is all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a great one and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.